Hey everyone, it is late at night and I am Norman. I recently got my tutor back and I did a video about it. And I mentioned the watchmaker who had worked on the piece. But thanks to one of you out there, you called out some information that I forgot to pass along and really should have. So I thank you so much for that feedback. Tonight I'm going to go over some of the details that I had inadvertently overlooked in that video and give you an idea of just what it's like to have a vintage Tudor serviced, what kind of costs we're looking at, stuff like that. Having this watch serviced is a little bit different than servicing watches that aren't quite as in demand as far as the brand goes. Even my pull router was a totally different experience. That servicing cost me a fair amount of money just because the cannon pinion needed replaced. If it wasn't for that, that would have been a very accessible servicing. But brands like Tudor are a totally different animal. Okay, so in my previous video about the Tudor coming back, one thing in that video, I couldn't bring myself to take it off the wrist, even for the video. So throughout that whole video, I was wearing the watch. Tonight I have it off so I can actually get some closer shots of it, clearer shots of what was done to the crystal. Let's start by taking a look at exactly what came back and what was done and what kind of costs we're looking at. So this is everything that was shipped back and if you can see that tiny little speck that is a case screw and just look at how little that is i can't even get it in focus it's so tiny and as watch nerds who collect mechanical pieces we're well aware of how small components and watch movements are but it's so crazy to see a screw like this and just how tiny they are when they're not actually in the movement. It looks like a little bit of dirt in there. So I'm going to leave that screw in the bag so I don't lose it. Because if I look at it wrong, it may just float away. So I'm going to pinch the screw between my fingers so I can kind of get this other stuff out without it going anywhere. And it's still in there. So I showed you the gasket that came back. This is the old one and it was replaced. I also got the gasket from the crown. See, my camera's struggling to stay focused on it. But there it is. And I also got the crown tube back. And this was replaced because the threading was worn out on it. And here is the packaging from the replacement crown. And inside is the old crown. And I mean, on the outside, it's in pretty good shape. In fact, this packaging is like it wasn't even opened. Oh, that's why. Huh. So the top opens up not the bottom so this was opened and is the old i was kind of confused when it came in because this here hadn't been torn open but this top piece here kind of opens up right here now i can't get it to open but it opens like a lid up here here let's demonstrate that. There we go. So yeah, there's definitely the old crown that's in here. 
Very interesting packaging. Now I'm going to have to tape this bottom shut again. So that's everything that was sent back to me. And this servicing took, I think, two to three weeks. So a pretty quick turnaround. And Gabe is super personable. I spoke with him in person on the phone for quite a while, just chatting like I would a fellow watch nerd friend, which is pretty cool. It's nice dealing with a one man company. You know, it's very personable that way. And here's a closer look at the handwritten note that came back. But the real question is what was done to this watch and how much did it cost? So here is the itemized list. So we have the description of the watch and then what he called out is a new crown and it says, what is that? BR gasket, hmm. a new case screw, case tube, and that came to $400 and 200 of that is the crown itself, according to the quote that I got because it's a Rolex crown. So those are ridiculous to replace. And there's the note that was left on the receipt. So he actually didn't do a servicing, which is cool. When I called him, I let him know that it's running as though it had very recently been serviced. I mean, it was performing so well. And my main thing was, you know, you don't have to service it. I'm just looking to get this crown fixed. And I believe that he did inspect the movement uh, to make sure that there wasn't any anything worrisome about it. And he did find that screw that needed to be replaced. But since it's not called out in here, I don't think he actually did a full servicing. Plus, I would have been looking at something closer to about $600 because he did have to replace the crown. So for a vintage Tudor like this one, you're looking at about $400 for servicing, but it depends on who you send it off to. If it's just a company, uh, it might be less than that. I've sent watches to TikTok Watch Repair, and I think their quote might be a little bit lower if I had asked for one on this, but I don't know. I could be totally wrong. I'm not super familiar with Tudor. But with this company, you get the attention of the watchmaker who's actually going to be working on it. He's very personable, and the turnaround time just can't be beat. That was great. And the company's been around since 1977. But here is a better look at that crown that has been replaced. Unwind it. And it pops out. Push it in. And it catches nice and easily. There. So great having this working. Yeah. So that is what you can expect from some of these vintage tutors that are out there as far as servicing goes. So there you have it. Some of the additional details on the servicing of my tutor that I kind of forgot to go over in my last video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.